Good defense yeah, good to job bring him by down. The punter here. He used the sideline, uh, kept his leverage on him, which was about the only way he was going to stop Herring. Did a great run and a uh, good tackle there. Very nice. So, again, great field position there on the 19-yard line. They being Solon. Hand off to Herring. He goes off the right side, and he runs into a lot of ruins. 9.26 to go in the half. There was none but a yard gain on that one. Let's call it a second and nine. Line of scrimmage is the Padawan 18. They got a flanker to one side, split into the far side. Plus the middle. And completion. This one to Dan Tartabini, the wide receiver. He's down to about the one there. That was just a slant pattern by the split end uh, to the left of the quarterback. Did a nice job, took three steps, and hit him in his seam. Uh, great catch. They've really been setting it up pretty nicely, too, with the, uh, the running of Herring. And uh, Tartabini a week ago, Todd, three catches, 12 yards uh, per catch in their victory over Brush High School. Also uh, the cornerback, so he's going both ways, one of the multi-talented athletes for uh, Byron Morgan. And the Solon Comets and uh, the coaching staff heading out. We had a chance to talk to some of the coaches before the football game. We talked with Tom Cahuth of Padua High. Their first game was a victory over Lorraine Admiral King. Now, Lorraine Admiral King had a difficulty last year where they really didn't have the program in place. So Pay to play. Pay, pay to play, basically. So we asked him uh, how he can gauge his progress playing a team that went through the year that King went through a year ago. Well, I, it's really tough to gauge prior progress, and it's really tough to, to uh, stack your team up against other teams in the area until you've really gotten into the season. Uh, we just know the tradition here at Solon. Uh, we know what type of uh, experience they have and size and speed and things like that. So we certainly got to be a lot better prepared than we were last week. It's, it's an entirely different type of opponent. All right, thank you very much, Tom Cahuth, who has uh, had a football team at that high school in the state championship game against Moeller in 1979 as they lost, came in second in the state. So now will have a first and goal from the one-yard line. This goes to Herring. He tries to lunge over, and he gets it. He just came up there, lined up in the power eye, two tight ends, and... Uh, Harry went over the top. They had about one yard there. Did so a nice job there. We can talk about the likes of Rob Snyder, Darnell Connor, Jason Ledyard, Kyle Kowalski, Scott Stevens. These are the people up front uh, that have been doing a nice job opening the holes so far tonight for Kim Herring and for Cartoloni. And uh, they, take, they share in the credit, obviously, for uh, the touchdown. Scott going for the point after. Holding the ball is the quarterback, Zalingo. Left foot a kicker. By golly, that had to be a 40 yard kick. Looks like he's got a real strong leg there. Two touchdowns, 66 yards on nine carries for Kim Herring. 8.49 to go in the half, and Sullivan's on top, 14 to nothing. And it's the style of football that Pedro was playing up to this point tough to come back from a 14-point deficit. Yeah, it sure is. They've got to, uh, to make up any some of these points. They're going to have to throw the ball or uh, try to get some big plays. Uh, one right here in the special teams would surely get them back into it, but it's really tough when you close the field down and uh, try to play the game in 10 yards. You've really got to have some, uh, some power up front to move the ball, and they haven't been able to do it so far. John Scott gets ready to kick to Van Horn. And Nick Galenti. No. Make that glorious. There's Van Horn behind his blocker. Boy, that, that was one of the most patient high school kickoff returns I've seen in years. He really sat behind uh, the front wall and waited for his opening. That was almost like an illegal wedge. <laughs> Mike Mazur in on that stop. We're, We're talking see about how quick. And you see how on regular speed. There, there it is. That's just regular speed. 
Cruiser started taking his time, waiting for the blockers to get everybody down. Line of scrimmage is the 27. That's about their best position so far during the ball game. Fake hand off to the fullback, and Falkowski tries to go off the right tackle, and he runs right into Rob Snyder. One of the Snyder twins. Here's the scoring drive coming up. Played at three plays, 19 yards, and a minute and 12 seconds. Well, the scoring drive basically was Kim Herring's punt return. Uh, yeah, yeah. punt return and a good pass play there. It got him in the end zone. Part of the chain gang here. A second and 12 for Padua. Well, 10 Comets were in on that stop. <laughs> Only one cornerback was running up to try and get a late hit in there. Yeah, they had a split end out to the left that time, but uh, still had 10 guys packed in around the ball and tried to run right up the middle. 84 comes in for Padua. Dave Nicoletti. Good athlete, Nicoletti. Basketball, baseball. Special team player of the week last week. And uh, the offensive player of the week for Padua was their center, Pat Duffy. Uh, he's he gonna, is a tough kid. Uh, he's going to have a tough time tonight moving those Comets off the ball. All right. First completion, Josh Kentwell. Josh Kentwell at 6'1", 182, brings it in, fist over the cornerback nice uh, on the stop. Nice little pop pass to the tight end there. Didn't get him enough for the first down, but uh, it was a good-looking play. It was well-designed. Quarterback just took three steps, and uh, they had a little blitz coming from the left side. One of the linebackers just hit the tight end. It was a good play right there. Cantwell uh, last week had one touchdown in their victory over Lorraine Admiral King. A couple of uh, receptions for 17-yard average, and here's uh, Mr. Herring again. Shoot, he gets a nice one off this, on this punt. And on the run, Herring gets it. Boy, he is a player with confidence. Yeah, He's nice running job. parallel and still pulls it in without stretched arms. He did a real nice job just getting to that ball. That ball yeah. was a uh, pretty good kick. Slicing Taylor away from him a little bit, and he uh, ran it down and caught it in stride and uh, was able to get upfield. So that's six minutes remaining. First half. 14 point lead for Solon. And they've got a first down from Padua's 43 yard line. And a keeper on the option play is Arlinga. He picked up a couple, and Jason Formani, along with Mike Thomas, in on the step. Time flying by here in the second quarter. First quarter went a little slow by high school standards, but now we're, we're at 5.28 to go in the second quarter with a 14-0 Solon advantage. Second and seven after the three-yard pickup by Zorlinga. And he goes to Herring. Oh, my. He's goes inside, moves outside, and he can break it in, and he does. Third touchdown of the game. He owns all three of them. His fourth of the season. 40 yarder. And uh, obviously he could have he could have gone up through the tackles. In between the tackles. He he just punched it out outside. And there's that football speed. We're isolating on uh, Kim on this play. Let's take a look at the replay and, and this is great. This is a great individual play here. Uh, play was designed to go up the middle. They had it pretty well uh, stopped up in there. He just bounced it out to the left and beat everyone to the end zone. Uh, he's got you know the best speed on the field and uh, showed it there. He sure did. Uh, Jolliffe had a kind of an angle on him there, but just could not run him down. John Scott splits the upright for his third extra point. It now is a 21 to nothing ball game, and that's just. Herring has something you can't teach. Two things, really, instinct and speed. As we talked uh, in the open to the football game, uh, guys, when we watched him play in the last year, he he would have plays like that where you thought someone had the angle on him which could run him down, and and it's, his speed is just so deceptive. He'll 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 take a pitch and you'll think he got 10 yards. There's Tom Cahoot trying to figure out what are we going to do to stop uh, this outstanding running back, uh, but. And if they worry about Kim Herring, then 
then they're going to have to die by the Joe Zarlinga pass. But Herring, uh, he'll take off with a pitch, and you'll think, oh, that was a nice eight-yard run. And then when you look at them, check the chains, the guy got 14 yards. It just... It's really hard to gauge how fast he gets down the field. Right now he's at 106, three ten TDs, carries. 10 carries. So obviously more than 10 yards of crack. Somebody, we got a man in the sideline, said Cahoots was talking about trying to get Todd here to go down and give him a hand. <laughs> Todd yeah, helped him run the offense. back there with uh, wearing number 17. I don't know if I could slide into his jersey, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. 5.09 to go. First half. Here comes Gorius. Yeah, that's Ryan Gorius. And he gets out to about the 26. Padua will take over first down from that point. We're going to have to loosen up that offense here. This will be an important drive for them going into halftime. They've got five minutes, uh, plenty of time to get a score here, but it's going to uh, it'll help their confidence a lot to be able to get a score or at least to be able to drive the ball and uh, sustain a little offense here. Get a few first downs. Be real nice for these kids. They come out with two wide outs to the right, which is uh, something they haven't done yet. They've got a guy in motion going left now. That's Ryan Gorius goes in motion. They go to the fullback. Sean Gorius gets no yardage. Kyle Kowalski and Kevin Snyder, both of those defensive tackles for Solon, playing a great ball game. Sure are. Yeah, they've got a lot of work so far. Uh, they've been running the ball between the tackles, and Solon's done a good job stopping it up. But I'll tell you that three wide receiver didn't fool the defense. No, they're ready but, uh, for it. See if they can air the ball out a little bit using that. That's what they uh, hit their last pass with that same formation. See if they can come up and use it again. A little play action pass here. No time. Defensive backs did a great job. Mazur over, was all over Van Horn. Mazur with the tackle. Nice Mike job. Mazur got in there and, and sacked Falkowski. That's tough little play action here, and they're going to try to roll out to the right. Uh, really didn't have much time there. As soon as he cleared the tackle, he's got a defensive pressure. And never had a chance to look downfield, really. Get another look at it there. And Mazur, a week ago, had four tackles, two sacks in uh, their victory. So he adds to that. Another sack. So it's a third and 21. Coming up to the three-minute mark in the second quarter. Line of scrimmage is Padua's 15. They come out with three wide receivers here. Oh, you never did a lay a game. Delay a game there. Come out with three wide outs, and uh, Solon's lining up in a two-deep coverage. So they've got the field spread out a little bit, but uh, on a third and 21, it's an awful tough down right there. Dead ball. Off the tough to get that yard. Make Offense. that about uh, 25 third down. now. Well, they'll spot that. It's a 10, and it'll make it third and 26. We're exactly three minutes and one second remaining as they wind the clock. So whereas we were just talking about how Padua would like to get things going to get some confidence, now we could be looking at uh, Solon maybe putting more points on the board before the half. Well, they're going to come, they're going to lay back their ears and come right after Polkowski. <laughs> we intended that one for Cantwell. Herring was back there just to make sure things didn't get out of hand, so... You'll be seeing him punt once again to number one. Yeah, it's a tough situation. You're coming up in a third and 26. There's not a whole lot you can do. You'll see a lot of teams... Uh, just play a little soft. Will play, well, a lot of teams offensively will just try to get a chunk of that and uh, maybe regain some field position. But uh, I can't say the uh, percentages are real good to get a first down in that situation. No. Good snap. Nice kick. Herring and Leonard Brown. And it crosses the 40 and will die at the 44-yard line. 2.29 showing on the clock. Okay, Tom Cahooth, the product of uh, Western Reserve University. He played for the legendary Eddie Finnegan. He's been at Padua High for 25 years, and he's obviously upset as uh, he talks with one of his players. 
That's 16 Bob of them as, as head coach, and he's also the athletic director there. And his wife works in the office, Susan. Real That's nice family. people. Whoa! Almost intercepted. A great job by Mike Thomas. Looks like we got a flag now, possibly a uh, pass interference Dan Van there. Horn. Well, that really was slow in developing, but uh, good job by Thomas and staying with the quarterback. Yeah, so Lincoln did a good job to get that ball away. He uh, tried to sell the play action fake real well, and as soon as he turned around, he had a defender right on him. That ball was a little bit up for grabs, and it looks like Pass the... Pass uh, interference, defense, first down. There he goes, like the defenders were a little bit on his back there trying to get that ball. Well, Kahuth and uh, company now. There's Joe Vadini. He is thinking, what in the world do we do to stop this, this offense? And you have an interference call against you. That's certainly nothing you want. You can tell that guy's disappointed with that call. <laughs> That's Joe Vadini <laughs> talking <laughs> to the officials. I'm disappointed in him. Line of scrimmage, the Padawan 28. Plenty of time for Zalinga. And he still gets the pass away. Mike Thomas brought down Zarlinga, but he got the pass away. Got a flag down again in the backfield there. Was, I think, uh, Demond Moore. He was dragged down as he was thrown. Let's see what the call is. Well, there's a flag going to be against Solon's Solon. walking back. Yeah, it looks like a holding call. He was uh, thrown in that vicinity. Nice job by Zarlinga there, getting rid of the ball again. He had a guy on his back and uh, was able to get rid of it. Offense. Repeat first down. By the way, the officials are giving the signs to the new press box and facility across from us. We're on the other side. You think uh, the officials heard Vadini? <laughs> yes. Baldwin. Minute 53 to go. Shot of the facility here. Very nice. Very That's nice. Only. Going deep across the middle and almost intercepted but going down hard and bringing it down is uh, Dan Tartabini. They ran a, uh, Tartabini there ran a post pattern. They had a three deep coverage and uh, another situation where it's second and about 25 here. So defensive backs were playing deep. Uh, free safety did a good job just staying in the middle and uh, Take a look at it. actually a great job by Tartabini there just knocking the ball down. He saved an interception. Yes. That was Jolliff who almost had himself an interception for Padua. So second and 26 with a minute 42 to go in the first half. Here he goes, hitting back to Harry. Blockers in front of him. With that speed, he still got some yardage, but the good pursuit by Padua's defense in stringing that one out. They did a good job there. Uh, you know, this point right here is about a minute and a half left and they've got to go 50 yards uh, if they can keep Solon from making a big play they should be able to get out of this half you know, without giving up any more points how successful were your high school football teams when you played ball Todd not very unfortunately uh, had a tough uh, tough couple seasons when I was quarterback I think we won a total of uh, maybe five six games in a couple years but This one to Moore. Devon Moore gets a first down. Looks like you picked it up. Inside the 20. Good pass Looks there like by Zarlinga. That's a uh, tough situation for a quarterback. Came up third and about 20 and uh, was able to hit, hit him for a first down. Last week he caught three balls, 27 yards per catch, so he was close to that average with this one right here. Nice play by Damon Moore. He is a junior, also one of the basketball players and track stars at uh, Solon High. Kim Herring also runs track, uh, the sprints. Okay, there we are. This is Todd Philcox. <laughs> oh, yes. By the way, stay with us. At halftime, the marching band from Solon will be here to entertain you. And they have an outstanding music program just like their football program. So stay with us at halftime. One of the real great features of high school football in Northeast Ohio is to hear the kids that work so hard on the high school bands practicing uh, week after week. They go to camps for uh, their bands and they're out there on the hot parking lots. These kids really deserve uh, to get the recognition. So it will be a pleasure to watch them at halftime. The graphic you saw 
was Padua has a marching band, but they, the band did not follow him here to Solon. So Solon will have half time to themselves. And Joe Badini's going to have a lot to say in that locker room. Split backs. Right half back and then going in motion is Herring. Well, I'll tell you what. Zalinga laid that thing out beautifully. Another Tartabini good ball. Tartabini just a, couldn't pull it in. Had three receivers to the right side. Two guys came down on uh, slant patterns, and uh, one went to the flat. Put the ball right where it needed to be. Uh, just couldn't didn't make the play there. I think that was more on the, the intended receiver. Let's watch it Let's again. Let's check the replay here. No, that was Tartabini. There yep, it is. Second and ten. Senior wide receiver. Plenty of time, minute 17 to go and a half. Drop play, this one to Herring. He spins his way inside the 20, gets back to the original line of scrimmage where Mike Thomas put the hit on him. We have had, uh, Todd, in recent years, some outstanding kids uh, play high school football, especially running backs in this area. Of course, Desmond Howard, the, uh, the Heisman Trophy winner, Robert Smith at Euclid. Uh, the list goes on and on. O.J. McDuffie at uh, Hawkins School. Wide open. Come on, Moore was wide open. No one within five, six yards of him. Yeah, Solon came up uh, a little bit of a hurry-up offense there. Came up to the line of scrimmage and got a playoff pretty quickly. Uh, a little bit of roll to the right. And Zarlinga hit uh, his wide receiver on a little corner, corner pattern there, it looked like. And the score now is 27 to nothing with 47 seconds to go. Padua scored 26 points in uh, last weekend's uh, victory. 26 to 7 win over Lorraine Admiral King. They're going for two. And they got it. That was Tartabini pulling that one in. 29 nothing. Whoa. Well, they've, uh, they've made a lot of big plays this half. You know, that time they got the ball with about two and a half minutes and uh, had two big plays, one on the third and about 20, and that uh, pass right there for the touchdown. They've had some big runs, a couple big pass patterns, and uh, Padua's been unable to stop them so far. Nice pass. Zalinga now three for nine, one TD, a total of 56 yards. A little corner, pat corner pattern there by uh, Damon Moore. Did a nice job. He was the one who caught that third down pass also. So he's uh, one of the top receivers there for Solon. Runs right. a four, this game is just getting point. out of hand. It is. It really is. Uh, last week they played about uh, a half and maybe a series into the second half, the first stringers. So you may see that situation here as well where uh, Herring and his friends will play uh, maybe one series in the second half and then take a break and let all the other kids who work hard get a chance. Moore um, now with 39 yards on two receptions and one TD. And Tartabini has one catch for 17 yards tonight. Moore last week had three receptions and averaged just over 27 per reception. Warriors takes it at 11. Tries to go right up the middle. Gets an opening. Wow. That's a good return there. They ran, the, room, didn't they ran a middle wedge there, which they've been trying all game, and uh, got a few blocks. And Gorius found a crack there. Well, my mom always said that patience is a virtue, and I guess Gorius is uh, exemplifying that right here as he waits behind the wall, sees a little opening, and then is able to make a very nice return. Way to go. Guess who was in on that stop? The G. kicker. John Scott. Wolakowski. Play he action. Behind. Running for his life. And he runs out of bounds. It's close to about the 36, 37. Mike Mazur was chasing him. That's twice he's been chasing yeah, him. Yeah, and he heard him. <laughs> There's no doubt that he was making tracks for uh, for some positive yardage or the sideline, either or. 14 seconds to go in the half. Stay with us. Great halftime show put on by the Soul and Comets Marching Band. Been a tough night so far for those kids, the Bruins of uh, Padua. Still got another half of football to play, and these are the types of games where you really uh, see what your kids are made of for the rest of the season. The first time the Falcone has gone to 
was left, and he threw it a little short. Kurt Tavini, one of the two-way performers for Solon, but the corner was there defending. A little Ingham. pressure there, and he really never had a chance to, uh, you know, get his shoulders around and uh, get going downfield. So uh, got a little bit on that ball, but if he could have uh, got, you know, pointing upfield, I think he could have thrown that a little bit better. Eight seconds to go here, second quarter, and it's 29 nothing, Solon over Padua. The number 20 you saw coming up the field is Pat Spicer. Pitch out. This one to Ryan. And he gets to about the 40. The monster back, Mike Brown, number five. Well, be him out. before the game, Tom Kohuth was saying how much they worried about the balance of Solon. And that has really killed him tonight. You worry about Kim Herring? Well, then Zarlinga can throw a nice pass. Then you've got Tartabini out there catching him. Then you have Damon Moore. And then you worry a little, about, a little bit about those guys running those routes and maybe a sprint draw to our friend uh, Herring. Just too many weapons. And uh, the Chagrin Valley Conference ought to be exciting this year. And Solon will be right up there fighting for it. Always is. Always is. We had five teams one year went to the playoffs. Is that amazing? Yeah. Again, just hard-nosed, aggressive line play by Solon. That ends the first half with the Comets on top, 29 to nothing. So the coaching staff in Padua is going to have to do a lot of talk in that locker room. Across the way, and on this side, the marching band from Solon will be getting ready to entertain you. The coaching staff coming off the field last from Solon. As you see the team going into the locker room, and they're already talking about what's going on in that field. Yeah, it's going to be tough for uh, Padua coming out here. That was uh, obviously not the way they wanted that first half to go, and uh, they might have to change their game plan a little bit, try to throw the ball and uh, try to make a couple big plays. Uh, who knows, maybe they have a reverse in the game plan or something they can come out and try to make some big plays and try to get back into it. Uh, it's going to be a chore. The marching band under the direction of John Stein. Mark uh, Wilkinson will speak to the band as the end of the field. The first song is towards their home side, which is the other side. But that's only the first song they will be playing to our cameras on this side. So let's go down and enjoy the Solon Comet Marching Band. Adam Shangris and Starlet Advisor J.
the halftime show the score at the end of the first half is someone's on top 29 to nothing we'll be back with the third quarter right after this Shut up. Wait a it is a different program about the devastation of drug abuse what's different about this program is that it was written and performed by inmates inside a prison in northern ohio Hear the real story about drugs from people who know the score and are serving the time. Watch Brother to Brother, Dope is for Dope. Join us tomorrow afternoon at 5. Now back to high school football on TV 25 WVIC. Telecast of tonight's high school football game is made possible by the Cleveland Browns, who are happy to support Channel 25's coverage of high school football in Northeast Ohio. The Pepsi-Cola Company, Bobblers of Regular and Diet Mountain Dew. And the East Ohio Gas Company, the Sunshine People, who bring natural gas to more than a million people in Northeast Ohio, heating homes, cooking meals, and providing energy for industry. Welcome to Stewart Stadium at Solon. This is Mike Massa along with John Tellich and Todd Wilcox. Wilcox from... Wilcox, the, Mike. Yeah, Wilcox, <laughs> that's okay. Wilcox from the Cleveland Browns. Let's take a look at the first half stats, gentlemen. All right, and it has obviously been one-sided in favor of the Solon Comets. Seven first downs to two. At one point in the football game, uh, these guys were at negative yardage. They pushed it up to 10 total yards for Padua, but obviously 174 total yards for Solon. Uh, Kim Herring with 12 carries, 112 yards, three touchdowns, his longest, a 40-yard score, a 36-yard score. And the quarterbacks are Linga, three completions out of nine throws, 56 yards for him. And you see the time of possession and the penalties as well. well okay, there you go. Total yards, only 10. Because Pata was thrown for so many losses during the first half, yep. become negative in yards. Yeah, that it's interesting to see the uh, time of possessions pretty much equal. Uh, that's just showing us that Solon's made some real big plays. They've had some big running plays, uh, a couple big passing plays, and uh, hasn't taken them much time to score, you know, 29 points. All right, let's take a look at the scoring recap for Solon. Herring, a 36-yard run. Get ready to see that number one a lot. <laughs> Herring for a one-yard run. Over the top. Herring for a 40-yard run. And then they thought they'd bring Damon Moore into the picture, and he had a nine-yard reception from Joe Zarlinga, and then there was a two-point conversion from Zarlinga to Tertabini. And the fans of uh, Padua appreciating the TV coverage of the gang at Channel 25, and... Uh, Tom Farmer, our director, and the, the guys on the cameras and the, the audio people and the guys with the stats and all the folks doing a great job. It's a pleasure working with them. There's Tom Kahuth and his QB Falkowski as he gets set to, for the second half of action. But uh, they say Padua is number one, uh, along with uh, the folks here at Channel 25. But Padua really has had a difficult time. And I think, folks, tonight your number one is the guy wearing There's number one. There's a man of the hour right Kim there. Here. You know, they th they th they're thanking us, and I want to thank uh, Byron Morgan, the coach from Solon, and, and uh, Tom Cahooth from Padua for getting the materials, the tapes to us, all the information, helpful, courteous, anything we need, they said, that's what makes this whole thing work. So we're going to get ready to start the second half, and the white and orange will be the Bruins of Padua. 
They've dug themselves a little bit of a hole. Let's see what they're going to change some things. Some of their hardy fans here, they're not giving up. Uh, they're hamming it up a little bit for the cameras of uh, Channel 25, but they're still excited. Maybe their team can make something happen. Tom Cahuth trying to get the charges moving for the Bruins, but boy, talk about uh, we had a shot before we came back to action here in the second half of uh, the camera was looking sideways, and that's basically what Pata was got to do in the second half. It's like running uphill against a very balanced Solon team. So we'll see a lot of kids get some action in the second half now. Solon will be kicking off to start the second half. You're looking at the deep men for Padua. Uh, Dave Nicolendi and Ryan Gorius. Kicking for the Comets will be John Scott kicking off. Excellent kicker. He is three for three in the uh, point afters in this game. He was three for four last week and also had two uh, field goals, two for two, a 28-yarder and a 37-yarder. So start the third quarter. Solon on top, 29 to nothing. Takes a bounce and picked up by Gorius. And he gets out to about the 29-yard line. Padua will take over from that position, which is one of probably one of the uh, better series they're going to start as far as field position is concerned. At uh, Rob Dukowski will be at the quarterback. Ryan Gorius will be the tail. Sean Gorius will be the fullback. The wide receiver Dan Van Horn. Dave Nicoletti will be the split. Well, Ryan Gorius just went to the sideline, so uh, they have another back in in the backfield. We'll get that to you in just a second. And they got a power back split. Both ends in tight. This is going to Falkowski on a keeper. And it looks like he's got enough for the first down where Dale Adams, the linebacker, finally brought him down. That's the biggest piece of real estate they've picked up so far in the game. They came in with their uh, closed down formation there, a little play action fake going to the right. And, uh, Falkowski just took a naked around the left end. Did a good job running the ball. And, uh, looks like about a gain of seven yards there. Come up about second and three. As Kevin uh, Snyder shot the gap there in the middle of the line, and the play was already past him, heading left and heading upfield. Again, the I formation to uh, wideouts. And almost intercepted. Harry almost had it. The intended receiver was the Nicolenda. No, make that Cantwell. Defending was Dale Adams and the monster back Mike Brown. Seem, it seemed like a convention of defensive backs in the area of the pass, but check it out once again. Pass rush of, from the outside, Todd. And a lot of coverage there. Falkowski snuck that ball in. Uh, had a chance of being caught, but it uh, wasn't. And uh, a little dangerous pass, but it's good to see him, you know, throwing the ball and uh, try to make something happen here. I think that was only the second first down for Padua. Open man pulling this one in is Van Horn, but he is hit immediately. Chris Ober, the left cornerback, 5'11", 165-pound junior, stopped him. That'll bring up a fourth, which means that Padua is going to have to give up the ball again. And Herring is still on the football field. He will be back to uh, receive the punt along with Pasadena. You're looking at Rob Schutte. Ooh, oh, snap. And almost losing it. That was TJ Pasadena. He covers his own mishandling and they'll take over, Solon will, from their own 42. 24 yard punt for Rob Schutte. No return. Just about a minute and a half gone here in the third quarter. This is the first possession for Solon in this half. Quarterback Zalinga is still in. Herring is still in. Fullback Cardelloni. Tertabini the wide receiver. And Demont Moore is the split. Adams is the tight. And here goes Herring. My golly. He carried Van Horn for about three yards. That was a very quick 15-yard play, it seemed. Nice hole up the middle there. A little bit of a counter play. 
Let's check this one out. Little counter play. They start out to the left, and uh, Herring cuts back right there. Good hole. Nice job up front blocking, and Pato was able to stop him that time with a, not too big of a game, but they're uh, making some real gashes in the defensive line there. And Herring gets the ball again. Puts his shoulders down and gets to about the 40. He was hit, I believe, by... Uh, 48 for Monty, and he is still down on the on the turf. Yep. Hit him real hard. Yeah, the trainers are going out to take a good look at him. But you heard those hits. Oh. They uh, they're not bashful. That's what we mentioned before about uh, Herring. He'd just as soon try to run over you to show you his power, uh, whereas some backs in the past might try to slice through things. Glide through a first down. There is a shot of Kim Herring. Let us take a look here at the replay. Once again, it's Formani, the defensive player, makes the stop. May have landed on the football. He might just be uh, trying to figure out if there's any air left in. Uh, you know, this is the kind of, of night with this coolness, the wet grass. There are going to be a lot of leg cramps. You didn't have artificial surface when you were in high school, did you? No, no. We, uh, we played got on fields in Cleveland Whatever grass school. there was, we played on it. I mean, there wasn't much grass either. <laughs> wasn't much grass either. A little bit of dirt, a lot of mud. Yeah. How, how was your team followed? You mentioned in the first half that it wasn't that successful, wins and losses, but you get a lot of people to come to your games? Yeah, we had a relatively large high school. Uh, grew up in a town, uh, about 100,000 people or so. So we had some pretty good turnouts. And, uh, Started improving about the time I left, I think. And <laughs> ever since then, uh, they've become a pretty good team. So I, that was a tough, uh, tough couple of years there in high school, but I think uh, you know, they turned it around a little bit. And That's being, Jason for Manny. For Manny. And, and being a pro football player, you don't get a chance during the season to go back to uh, your alma mater and check the kids out, do no, you? No, I haven't seen a game there. Uh, probably back in college, I think I might have got back a little bit and seen a game here and there. But. It's been a while. Don't see too much high school football anymore. I understand you're waiting for him to send you a lifetime pass. Is that right? <laughs> no, I'd be happy to contribute whatever I could. <laughs> I could. bet you would. So they'll have it. Second and seven from Padua's 41. <laughs> That's a hand up to the fullback, Rich Cardelloni. Picked up a couple of yards, and that's not much more than that. Sean uh, Gorius in on the stop, the linebacker. He's a two-way performer and a two-year starter. You see on the sidelines, they're working on uh, or underneath the shoulder pads. Uh, you, know, you hit a kid that hard, you could be separating your shoulder. There could be a lot of things there, but they're, they're checking uh, Jason out right now. How's it feel? Two-yard pickup. It's a third and five. Pitch back, this is Herring. Almost. Another first down. Boy, he is just fearless. Yeah, he Kevin put his Mack. Head down there. <laughs> there was Kevin Mack putting the head down and uh, trying to run through someone. I saw no difference between what Kevin does for the Browns and and uh, what Kim tried to do right there. Oh. That's impressive there. He runs away from one guy here. He's got a chance at a tackle. Uses his speed and, uh, and uses a little bit of power here. And that is Jeff Jolliffe, six foot, 160 pound junior. My Lord. There yeah, you see, a, he just walked out of that. That's an impressive high school running back. Uh, yes, I'm sure is. he's got a good future ahead of him. On top of that, Kim is a holding call. Kim Herring is a three point student in the classroom. He's got it all going for him now. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great way to do it. Uh, guys who can study in high school, get a good academic uh, you know, history. They have a chance to go to any school they want to in the country if you can play football the way he can. And, and good school system here in Solon. So you do well in Solon schools, you're doing fine. Well, the penalty brings it back. It's a third and ten now for the Comets after that holding penalty. Throws it. Completes this one to Dale Adams, the tight end. That's his second reception of the year, the first in this ballgame. Well, they're doing it with their wideouts in the first half, and now they're using the big guy uh, to receive passes from uh, the quarterback. Another first down. And as you can see, the kids were real charged Boy, up there. I'll tell you, they, they moved quickly. <laughs> uh, I think this is a little bit more like, uh, like they did it. 
That was a nice ball there. A little crossing yeah. pattern to the tight end. Uh, Solon's done a great job on third down. They've converted a couple of real tough ones. Uh, long yard situations, and they've been able to keep the ball. That was Pat Duffy, the center, a two-way performer who brought him down. And he chased him from his linebacker position. Well, even using the sideline there as one of your defenders, uh, Padua, uh, Herring was still able to turn uh, not much of uh, a situation into a positive one for him, uh, yardage-wise. Picked up about five yards. So first, uh, second in five for Solon. There's Byron the Padua, Morgan. 23. Byron Morgan was an All-American tight end his days in college at Finley. And drafted by Dallas. Oh my, look at Heron. And he got a flag. Oh. Van Van Dorn in on the stop. Another one of the. They're going to bring that back, most likely, huh? Yeah, another Two option the play there. Little option play to the left. Uh, Herring did a good job cutting the ball up that time. Looks like they're probably going to bring him back, though, again. We will have uh, someone guilty of a clip. So they'll bring it back. Clipping, offense, repeat second down. And that'll take it all the way back to about the 34. They've got to get to the uh, 17. So it'll be second and 17. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Inbounds. That was Tartabini. More, more. Was the up there. man? Tartabini with the catch. Well, they're saying he was out of bounds there. Good ball though. Apparently he was out of bounds. All right. Is he in or is he out? Uh, the gang here with the camera work. Let's judge for ourselves. Only one foot has to be in. Oh, he was way out. Yeah, it looks like he slid out of bounds when he was uh, catching that ball. But that was concentration. Because Moore went up and he went over him. Might have even deflected it a tad. Or... Third and 17 now for the Comets. <laughs> Great reception. Nice juggling. By Rich Cardelloni, the fullback out of the backfield. Van Dorn playing him good defense. But just a great catch and a good throw by Zalinga. Herring with a little block backside and uh, Cardelloni who does most of uh, the damage just as a running back out of the backfield, you know, rushing the ball, uh, picking up the reception right there. 5'9", 160 pounds senior. And Padua will go for it, fourth and eight from, I mean, uh, Solon goes for it, fourth and eight from the Padua 26. like a first down. Nice job by Dale Adams. So they came back to that play they used on third down uh, a little while ago. Tight end coming across the middle. Good protection again and uh, put the ball where it had to be. Nicolenti in on the stop but a little late. Another first down for Solon. Here's Zarlinga set to throw. A little pressure there but uh, as Todd alluded if you go to the well once and it works why not go again? Until they stop it. Herring still in, Cardelloni at fullback. Two wide receivers to the near side. Moore and Tartellini. Herring sidesteps, gives you a leg, takes it back, and picks up a few yards, and Mike Thomas finally brought him down. One of those Bruins feeling the brunt of the, uh, that was Mike Thomas who was being helped up by Herring. Feeling the brunt of uh, taking the punishment. Herring uh, seems to be dishing out a lot more than he's receiving tonight. Three touchdowns already. He's had an outstanding punt return. He's just had a great game as Solon leads 29-0 over Padua. Pat Duffy comes out as linebacker. Here's Herring. Caught by the jersey. Van Horn had Herring. He just and he holds him, him until uh, Sean Gregorius brings him down. He really scooted underneath Van Horn there to pick up a few yards. Byron Morgan across the way. I'd be very happy. 33 points last week and 29 already 
here this week. Yeah, they did. They won impressively over Brush a week ago, and then Padua won impressively over Lorraine Admiral King. And here's Kim on the night, 138 yards and three scores, 17 carries. He's in motion. Another quick hitter intends this one again for Dale Adams, but uh, Dave Nicolenti was there, broke it up. If you know you're play there. <clears throat> Little fake up the middle, tried to pop it to the tight end quick. Good defensive play there. Also there, uh, Jason Fermani, who was dinged earlier, uh, was one of the guys that was trying to knock the ball away along with uh, Nicolani. So a good play by the, the Bruins as they're digging in here, trying to prevent another score by Solon. You know, 138 yards for Herring. Last season, Todd, he had 1,760 rushing yards. Field goal attempt by Scott. That's more than far enough. That was a 33-yard field goal, and it was good. So now he is three for three. His longest of this season is 37. That makes it a 32 to nothing ball game with six minutes, half of the third quarter gone by. Stay with us at the end of this quarter. We'll be bringing you all the high school scores around the greater Cleveland area on the WVIZ and Plain Dealer scoreboard. Byron Morgan, you see a shot of him across the way. He's coached 31 All-Ohio football players in his years at Mayfield and, and of course, here at Solon. And uh, we're having a nice chance tonight to see the latest in that long line of uh, All-Ohio kids perform in Kim Herring. Mayfield has had a tradition, but I don't think the Mayfield tradition is as strong as Solon, and I think that's why he came over after all those years. Jack uh, Ruvalo's great job here for yes. so many years. He's just uh, picked up the baton and is carrying it further. Kids are uh, bigger, stronger. They've had the off-season weight program, which you really can't live without in football now. I know Todd would attest to that. Those guys are just bigger and faster. They will beat the heck out of you if, you don't, if you're not strong yourself. Ryan Gorius at about the 10 yard line. And he gets out to about the 24. Ryan Gorius returning to kickoff. Well, we still have Rob Felkowski as a quarterback, number 17. He is two of six for a total of 10 yards in the air. Felkowski, Zarlinga, six of 13. One TD and a total of 93 yards. He's having himself a good ball game. And they've got... If that was a screen pass, there was no screen. That was like they had a little bit of blitz coming off the left side there. I think Falkowski did a good job to get that ball away and uh, got it into his running back's hands, but just Solon's really uh, you know, running after the ball. They're swarming on defense. Uh, when you're up 32-0, you know, it's, it's easy to swarm on defense. Yes, I guess it is. And I would think some of these uh, some of these guys may be in for the last time in the ball game. some of the Solon players, like this, this defensive unit. There's been some substitutions, but others may be coming out after this. Look at it. Wolkowski was sacked by Dale Adams. He's the tight also, end. Also, Kyle Kowalski. Let's give them a half a sack each. All right, Dick let's Adams take a look at it here. First. This was a freight train that he just had no way of getting out of. Now, that the, was Adams first. Their, their defensive uh, line features a nose tackle, 65, who's all of 150 pounds. He gets double teen right there, so obviously it means... Dale uh, Adams has a little bit of room to roam and come on into uh, the defense, into the uh, offensive backfield. So here's Barrows. He's a tough 150-pound nose tackle for Solon. Good job. He benches about 275, and he only weighs 150. 
another sack. And he was in there. There's Barrows along with 49. Mike Mazur. Mazur. The Panthers are in a tough position here. They've, uh, you know, they've fallen behind significantly. They've got to throw the ball. And uh, Solon knows that. They're blitzing, bringing linebackers, uh, and really putting the pressure on Falkowski. He hasn't had a chance to throw the ball in, this, in the last two downs. So There's Mike. Nice play by him defensively. And this is not unlike uh, Bernie's situation uh, the first game of the year. That was difficult. They knew he had to throw, right, Todd? And they went after him in Indy. Shooty that's, that's gets the high snap. Gives a high kick. And it's covered. That was T.J. Passadin. Yeah, but he covers it, so taking over with, again, great field position, the Comets. Let's see who we have coming in at quarterback. See if it's Chris Berry, number six. Sean Cardelloni. You still have your starting uh, QB and your starting tailback, Herring and uh, Zarlinga. Coltrona's in there at uh, fullback, spelling uh, Cardelloni, who... He's an outstanding defensive player as well, but there's Herring. He's still in the ball game. Well, there you see. We'll have the scoreboard for you. This is Herring. Oh, my. <laughs> that just got to hurt him. 87 Cantwell on the bottom of that bump. For Manny, number 48 was also in on that stop, so Herring picks up more yardage. That's his 18th carry, and he's got 144 yards. Second and four. Line of scrimmage to 28. Coltrona. This is Coltrona. Fullback senior, 5'9", 155. And he's brought down by Mike Thomas. That was his first carry. Coltrona, a three-point student, track man. And Mikey's getting his action tonight in very much the same manner as a week ago. They take Cardelloni out, and uh, the game's pretty much well in hand, so Sean's getting a chance to do his thing as the fullback. And Herring's still in there. First and ten. Now, I think that was the first loss of the game for Solon on a running play. Sean Coach Cochona was the ball carrier in Messina along with Jeff Wilkinson backing up the tackle in on the stop. A handoff and Coltrona met immediately. Pato was still digging in here, although down by 32. Oh, they're not giving up. The final minute in the third, pitch back to Herring. Nice job by Dan Van Horn, pursuing him, forcing him back, and dropped him for a loss. I think Aaron's getting tired. Well, he's still down by the sidelines. Is he coming back in? Yep. There's Van Horn. He's getting up very slowly. Uh oh, the calf. There it is, Bobby. You know, with his dampness and his cool air, you get cramps in the calf of the leg. And a timeout is called. Uh, could be by the officials. Let's see that play again. Nice job by Dan Van Horn. A little option play going to the right here. Gets the pitch, but uh, let's say a block was missed downfield, and a good job by Van Horn. Really was nice. Following, but didn't get down the hit on the hit was Mike Thomas. He played off that block and went to the sideline. That was not a timeout. This is slight injury timeout. It's a third and 20 now for Solon. And interception. Cantwell. That was Josh Cantwell, the six foot one, 182 pound junior, who carries a 3.7 in a classroom and is a basketball player, and he showed it there. Yeah, there's quite a few uh, Padua Bruin fans here on uh, our side of the field watching the game. There's a flag on that play. It's called against Solon. There is the good look. Josh Ben Ball, personal that, foul. That's his second interception of the season. It's like uh, Solon tried to throw a little crossing pattern there, and uh, you've got to beat the linebackers. Anytime you're going to throw underneath in the middle, and did a great job there, uh, you know, reading the quarterback's eyes and uh, picking that ball off. He went up pretty high for it. 
I think this is the deepest penetration that Padua's had. They have not been in uh, Solon's half of the field. 20, 15 seconds now to go in the half, so stay with us at scoreboard. Quick hitter in the flats, and almost interception. Great defensive play. Intended receiver was Van Horn. Tremendous defensive play. Passenden was the cornerback who defended on that for Solon. He's got to get more smoke on that pass. Looks like that ball got away from him a little bit. Uh, it was high. Receiver made a good effort here, but you know, wasn't able to come down with it. Got his hands on it. Watch his juggling act here. Almost picked off. Second and ten. Complete and time runs out. That ends the third quarter with Solon on top, 32 to nothing. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter, but let's go to scoreboard. Welcome back to Solon High School, the Stewart Stadium. Padua has got a third and 10 from their own 40. Wilkowski still at quarterback. The Gorius brothers are in the backfield. In motion goes the older brother. He takes it in the flats. Gets one block and gets across the 45. Where he runs into Kim Herring, who is still playing defense. Yeah, they tried a little screen there. Uh, they've been getting a lot of pressure. Real good, probably a good call this time of the game. Uh, Solon knows that the Pato is going to be throwing the ball. Uh, maybe trying to screen will take a little bit of pressure off the quarterback. Uh, try to get one. You know, they picked up six yards there. A little short. Uh, I don't know, the fourth quarter, maybe they could go for this, but say so they're going to punt it away. Shooting will be kicking. Or they're lined up for a punt. We got Harry. Pass it in back deep. Herring takes it at the 27. Goes to the outside, slips one tackle. It's a foot race and he's caught from behind. Bringing him down. I'm surprised that he's still in the game, to be honest with you, Mike. Uh, here we are early in the fourth quarter and you're up 32 nothing, and that's probably it for the night for uh, Kim. Is he's not coming in with the offense. So uh, a lot of kids will get a chance to play tonight. Takes his helmet off, may be done for the night. Uh, well, that was shooty on that stop, but so um, Solon will have the ball with a minute gone in the fourth quarter. Line of scrimmage is Padua's 47. The clock is stopped. We should be seeing Chris Berry as the quarterback here for the Comets. He's a sophomore. Also plays baseball for Solon High. 5'9", 160 pounder. As Byron is instructing uh, some of the individuals on the second uh, unit. Byron Morgan, uh, we had a chance before the ball game to talk to him a little bit. And obviously one of the topics was the All-Ohio outstanding football player he has in Kim Herring. Well, Kim, I think, has handled it really well. There's uh, obviously a lot of people interested in him, and uh, the basic thing we told him is he's got to play right now. 
and uh, worry about all those things later. So we're trying to keep everything in a low profile. Even though he'll be a highly recruited young man, uh, we just keep everything low key. All right, Byron Morgan and uh, Kim Herring with an outstanding game today. Just one of many outstanding players in this area, like Joe Juravicious over at Lake Catholic. He'll get recruited highly, just as will Kim Herring. Perry's in at quarterback. Nice defensive play by Dave Nicolendi and Jason uh, Formani. That was pass it in with the, uh, the carry for Solon. Let's start thinking about a defense and offensive play of the game, gentlemen. Okay, I don't think I'll have to reach too far for the offense. Well, you're, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, there's been some great play uh, by a lot of kids on the defense of Solon, and there's some kids on, on the defense of Padua that have really come to play and are playing real hard. Uh, second and 12 is a loss on that. Well, Mike, the defense of Padua knows it's 10 minutes to go in the ball game, and Solon probably wants to give these kids a chance to run the offense, but there's going to be a little bit more run than pass, obviously. So. They're really coming after the football. Barry, Chris Berry is going to be at the quarterback. We also have Brad Noon, who's a wide receiver. He'll be wearing uh, number nine. Let's go to the tailback. Looks like you got the... Uh, TJ passing in on the carry, and Nicoletti, Nicoletti, and Messina on the stop. About four or five yards on that carry. We're now down to 9:15 to go in the football game, and it's going to be a fourth and uh, about eight, short eight. Getting ready to punt, Mike Brown. They got Van Horn along with Nicolenti waiting for the punt. Good high kick. Nicolenti and loses it. And it's recovered by Padua. They'll take over. First down from their own 21. And we have, I think, Nicolenti hurt. We have an injury timeout. We'll see at the end of this, the punt, and see how many uh, black jerseys hit him. Boom, he's on his Ooh, knees. Oh, look at that. Mm, the body, about, that's not a normal way to bend. It's not supposed to bend that way. Yeah. Looks like they're looking at an ankle here. Here's a third quarter stats, and it should be Oof. also in minus rushing yards per paddle. It's been a tough night. That probably includes a couple sacks there. They've really had a tough time. They've come out in the second half and trying to throw the ball. But uh, it's tough to throw when the defense knows you're going to throw. And Solon's put some pressure on them. And uh, it's made it real tough on Padua. Now he's able to walk off the field all right. So that's nice to see. Nicolante looks to be okay, so that's nice. And here comes Padua with John Wilkinson in at quarterback. And there goes Ryan Burrius. He gets out to the 25. Eric Kredmanski, number 36, is in the lineup. The tailback now for Padua. There's a look at John Wilkinson, who is a sophomore, six-footer. He's got Pat Spicer on our side, split wide. Oh, nice play by Van Horn. He comes back and gets the reception, and that is the third first down of the game for Padua. A good ball there by Wilkinson. Uh, it's through a little hitch out to the right. I think the ball might have gotten tipped the line of scrimmage, but he had enough on it that it uh, still got out there in good time. 
Ottawa shuffling a lot of kids into the ball game, getting everybody a chance to, to play tonight. Spicer is a split to the near side. Wilkinson on the draw play. This is Kudmanski, and he gets about a nine-yard pickup on that one, close to a first down. You know, Mike, before the ball game, Tom Kohuth was saying that he spoke with his team and he told them, we know that if, if we put this in boxing terms, when you line our stats up and our size and what have you up against Solon's, we're going to be an inch or two short or a pound or two short in every category. So you got to overcome it with emotion and desire. And they just didn't have enough uh, talent tonight to win this one. Well, this one is, a, uh, I think that's Curious. No, it's uh, Finmonski. Chad Golem, number 42 on the stop. One of the two deeps for Solon in the lineup. And it's nice to see Padua moving the chains. Maybe they can continue down the field and put a score on the board to end the game for them on a positive note because it's it's really tough to go into week three after a, a one-sided football game and try to get your team confident for the next game. So for their sake, let's see if they can move down the field. A little bit of a bobble snap there. Uh... Wilkinson had a little problem with the snap and never got the playoff there. In high school ball, Todd, uh, were you uh, were you a drop back passer? Did you run the the option, or how did you guys operate? I was pretty fortunate. Uh, we were able to throw the ball quite a bit my senior year. Uh, I had a coach that came in that was a graduate assistant at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, came in and was the head coach in high school, and uh, we'd probably throw the ball like 25 times a game. So that was one of the reasons I got the uh, opportunity I did. And, uh, to go to college Syracuse. Gets it away. I don't see a call by the officials. Apparently it was incomplete. We are tabulating our player of the week, both offensively and defensively, the MVPs, and we'll get them to you at the end of the ball game. We take a look at the replay. A little play action. Complete. Well, Tom was worried about the balance of Solon, and uh, he's seen it tonight. Third and 16 for Padua. In motion goes Fredmanski. Wilkinson. Little short. He had three receivers in the same area, and was just underthrown. John Wilkinson's got a nice arm, though. Yeah, he does. He had a couple of guys hooking up uh, out to the right there. Would have been tough to get the first down, but uh, flung it out there pretty good. All right, here's Shooty, who's getting set for another punt. You see the stats on him. Seven tonight. Obviously more than you would like. 204 yards, but... That is uh, Rob Schutte. Nice high punch, Jody. And in there to run it back is Herring. Gets around the corner. Picks his way along the sideline. Puts his head down and gets close to the 30. Oh, he got another 15 yards on a beautiful move. See any flags? Nope. Nice piece of running, but he... Uh, he really extended this one by virtue of uh, slipping a hip to somebody and then taking it away. See if we can pick it up as he continues down the field. Turns the corner there, right about here. And then uh, as he finishes most plays, he likes to hit somebody. Let's go to the fullback. Shona. Okay. Talking it over at the sidelines. Padawa 
They can't be very happy with this because the offense has just never got a rhythm going. And the defense, though, uh, Solon, I think, is partially responsible for that. And a loose ball. It's recovered Fedua by Fedua. Yeah, they tried the option there. The uh, Give those cheerleaders something Barry to got do the pitch Chirba. away. Well, he couldn't handle it. Uh, he's going to pass to another chance here. They is came that, out... Uh, uh, they came out last series, and I think they're just trying to you know, run their offense in this part of the game. They uh, realized that it would take a miracle to get uh, you know, a victory out of this game. I think they're going to try to run their offense, uh, get some players a chance to play who you know, probably haven't started and don't play a whole lot. They're going to see what they can do. I think uh, Wilkinson did a pretty good job at quarterback. He's throwing a couple of good balls. Nice, uh, nice play fake. There. We'll roll out to the right, uh, a little play action. Had a good ball, a chance to be caught, but uh, this is a tough part of the game. You know, they they've got to throw the ball to uh, you know try to hold the ball, get some first downs, and uh, Solon's well aware of that. I think uh, you know some of the young guys were in there getting a chance to play and uh, looking pretty good at this point. The route seemed to be a little odd in there. That's the second time we've had two or more receivers within three yards of each, each other, especially to the right, which means you have more defenders in that area. My, oh, my heavenly days. Continue to throw the ball, incomplete. Been a long night for... That's Joe Gulas, Padua High School. One of the Bruins banged up a bit here. Taking some of the uh, advantage off there. That's Messina, their outstanding uh, nose tackle. And boy, he had a lot of work to do tonight trying to stop that running game of... Uh, sure it is. Solon. We've got a third and ten for the uh, Padua. And here's the pass. Yeah. There you go. This is the Kornatsky. And he gets enough for the first down. So he gets close to the 45. Let's call it the 44. On the stop, Alan Newman. Good pass here by Wilkinson. Little swing pass to the left and uh, gave Fred Monsky a chance to run with the ball. Caught it behind the line of scrimmage. Was able to beat one guy and get the first down. But nearing the three minute mark in the ball game. They tried to go deep there to the right. Uh, didn't really have much of a chance. You got Solon's defense playing way off now, a little soft, and uh, tough to beat a team deep when they're playing soft and uh, with a big lead. You saw the eyes of John Wilkinson. He looks like a sophomore, doesn't he? A little wide-eyed there. Yeah. Taking it all in. 3.09 to go in the game. Wilkinson gets the time, goes across the middle, almost intercepted. His intended receiver. On defense, you're looking at yeah, good defensive at, uh, play there. Chad Golem. They're coming up third and ten again. It's a tough situation to be in. Uh, they converted it last time with a little swing pass to the left. A little three deep zone for the defense. They're rolling right here. Trying to run for the first down, and he gets it. He gets the stop for John Wilkinson. That's the first penetration in Sullivan's half of the field in the ball game, and we've got 2:54 to go. Nice job. Well, it's a positive note for him, and that's nice to see. He's tucking it there, and. Good pick up by the youngster. He's a sophomore. Coming in with 59, John Sandusky. For Padua. And there's a timeout in the field as Coach Tom Cahoot. Some more games in our area coming up uh, next week. Here's the schedule.
Holy Name versus Valley Forge. Lake Catholic versus Berea. This is tomorrow. I'm sorry, these are Saturday's games. Holy Name Valley Forge at Forge. Lake Catholic versus Berea at uh, Finney Stadium. Villa Angela St. Joseph's against Notre Dame Cathedral Latin, and that'll be at Newberry. Mm -hmm. And Notre Dame Cathedral Latin is coming up very well. Yes, they've really uh, started that program off nicely. I like to see Lake Catholic and Berea. That'll be a nice ball game uh, tomorrow. Lake Catholic was very impressive the first week, winning 56 to 7. There's a couple of good games for you next weekend. Brunswick at Euclid, Benedictine versus St. Edwards. That Fumble. will be at Lakewood Field. Fumble. Looks like Solon's got that one. A little uh, fumble, little fumble on the uh, exchange between the tailback and the quarterback. And uh, that's unfortunate. They had the ball moving there a little bit. I think Wilkinson was doing a good job, but Tom passed it in on that recovery. The right, expert here is going to diagnose this for us. Whoops. Yeah, it looks like Wilkinson never got a hold of that yeah. ball uh, from the center snap. He never got the ball and. Never had a chance to get it to the tailback there. Well, that's great double team blocking. Padua. Straight ahead. Clock is running. Coming up to the two minute mark. Well, Todd, it was grand having you back again. Now I'm going to get you another game this year. Thanks, Mike. Enjoy it. Uh, don't get a chance to see too much high school football and beautiful night to come out and uh, see a game. Would have liked it to be a little more competitive, mm. but I uh, saw a real good squad in Solon. Uh, a couple of good players we'll probably be seeing in the future. Yeah, they look like a playoff team to me, don't they? Uh, to you, yes. Mike and Todd, they really do. They made they made it last year. Yep. And just power football by Solon, not worrying about anything except running down the clock. Yeah, kind of ran up his blockers back there a bit, but. Uh, we're at 127 to go here in the ball game, and Solon winning very uh, comfortably at this moment. Okay, recall earlier on that uh, return. Nicoletti uh, here. How he was bent yeah. backwards. Now they're really looking at uh, at his ankle. Pulled off that tape. Well, he's not pulling his leg back while she's pressing there, the trainer. So apparently it's all right. We certainly hope so. Nice young man. Talk to him uh, before the game. Inside him a minute. Pass it in. Spinning away. Picking up tons of yardage. Pass it in. Beautiful piece of running. That was uh, Popic in on the stop. Number 26, the... Uh, 11th grader, the junior, 150 pounder. Yeah. Nice piece of running. Spin there towards the end to pick up more yardage as we take a look at the the replay here. Good piece of running by him. Yeah. Coming That's up right here. Spins away from that tackle. Gets 10, 15 more yards. That's TJ's brother. Fullback gets a call. That ought to do it, Mike. And that will be the last play of the game. Time runs out. Final score, 32 to nothing. A very impressive journeyman type of game played by Stolen. Yeah, they played real well. Uh, very few turnovers in the game. They were able to make some big plays running and throwing the ball. And uh, their defense, you know, played very well. We were able to stop the run and uh, force Padre to throw the ball a little more than they wanted to, probably. So, a real impressive showing by Solon. Well, let's take a look and see who our MVPs of the game. On defense, we've got the defensive player, Kevin Snyder, a six foot three, 215 pound uh, tackle. Senior. A senior, two year starter, 30.2 uh, GPA. And also a track man. He had four solos and five assists. One of the Snyder twins. Right. Did a nice job tonight. Their whole defense played very well. So our congratulations to Kevin. He'll be getting the plaque from the underwriters, the Cleveland Browns, Pepsi-Cola, and East Ohio Gas for his efforts. The defensive player of the game, or the offensive player of the game, 
number one, and he sure is, Kim Herring, six foot, 200 pounds. He's got 4-4 speed in the 40. In 19 carries, he had 137 yards, three touchdowns, and on defense, he's the free safety, and we're not including in his yardage what he does on punt and kickoff returns. What an outstanding athlete. Kim Herring, our offensive player of the game. Well, our he, congratulations. Obviously, he will be the guy that everybody will key to uh, try to stop the rest of the year. All those teams in the Chagrin Valley Conference will be after Kim Herring. Well, nice say the job. List. So, any final comments, Todd? I'll say that you're hungry. <laughs> I enjoyed it, Mike. It was a good game. Yep. Uh, saw some real talent out there. Yeah. The Solon's going to go a long way this year. I think they will. John, what about you? Well, I agree with Todd. I'm impressed by the way the program is just, every year they reload. They play kids that are juniors, a few uh, plays here and there each game. As you see Kim uh, heading off the field. And by the time they get to be upper uh, classmen, seniors and what have you, up, they, they do an outstanding job and then they're able to uh, be plugged right in. And Ty, yeah, you're on TV. Hi, Kim, smile, how you doing? Come on, smile for us, will you? Uh, but uh, they, they, they just reload each year. So they've had a great program over the years and this year it figures to be an outstanding one. Well, great job. There's Coach Morgan. Yeah, we're up here in the booth. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'll just say, uh, Coach Morgan, uh, talking to some of uh, the supporters of uh, the program and, and some of the kids. Hey, Coach. Hello there. All right, I'll see you guys. Well, here we are. The big tall fella <laughs> is Todd Philcox. I got that one right with the Cleveland Browns. And to his uh, right is uh, John Tullich. <laughs> and there's the locker room right below us, as a matter of fact. Our camera's able to shoot that. So the final score, 32 to nothing. Solon ends up on top. And so for John Tellich, our commentator, Todd Philcox, who is our commentator, the guest commentator, Bob Popovic, and Marty, who is the statistician, Marty Kapinski, who is our defensive spotter. This is Mike Massa saying good night from all of us at WVIZ Sports. Afternoon at 5, WVIZ takes you inside a correctional institution for a look at where drug dealers and drug abusers end up. Don't miss Brother to Brother. Dope is for dopes. Tomorrow at 5, right here on WVIZ. Tonight's high school football game was made possible by the Cleveland Browns, who are happy to support Channel 25's coverage of high school football right here in Northeast Ohio. The Pepsi-Cola Company, bottlers of regular and diet Mountain Dew. And the East Ohio Gas Company, the Sunshine People, who bring natural gas to more than a million people in Northeast Ohio, heating homes, cooking meals, and providing energy for industry.